Do you know who is often referred to as the Golden Lady of Israel? None other than Golda Meir, the revolutionary figure who became the first and only woman to serve as Prime Minister of Israel. She was not just Israel's matriarch, but also its Iron Lady, unafraid to speak her mind and face the music no matter what. Are you ready to open the pages of history to discover the life and legacy of Golda Meir? Let us dive headfirst into the fascinating story of Golda Meir, where we will see the world through her eyes. Be sure to pledge your support by giving us a thumbs up and subscribe before we set out on this amazing tour. Is it possible to embrace liberal ideas and a strong Zionist commitment without them conflicting with one another? It may seem impossible to be a decent liberal and a good Zionist at the same time. People presume that there is an either-or situation. Golda Meir showed that it is possible to be both a liberal and a Zionist, breaking free from such narrow stereotypes. She played a pivotal role in forming the foundations of modern-day Israel. Golda Meir stood up for workers' rights, backed the formation of a powerful workers' organization, and supported universal health care as part of a strategy to benefit everyone in society. How did a young girl from Milwaukee become the world's most famous and progressive Zionist figure? Golda Meir was born in Kiev, Ukraine in 1898. Her earliest memories were marked by a fear of violence and Jew-hating riots. In 1943, in the midst of the horrors of the Holocaust, she described Zionism as the lifeline for Jews in need of rescue. She envisioned Zionism not only as a means of survival, but also as a way to redefine the role of Jews in creating a better society in their homeland. Golda Meir's family sought refuge in Milwaukee in 1906. She graduated as valedictorian in 1912 despite facing adversity. She set out on a journey to Denver. There, she and her sister Shana jumped headfirst into discussions, stirring the pot on topics of equality for women, workers and Jews. They were in favor of socialist Zionism's equal society that was envisioned for the budding Jewish state. Golda married fellow socialist Morris Meyerson in 1917, and the two of them moved to Israel's Kibbutz Merhavia in 1921. However, the couple eventually became separated. Golda Meir emerged as a key Zionist figure long before the birth of Israel. In 1930, she played a heroic role in the creation of Mapai, the Labour Party of the Land of Israel. She had to wear multiple hats, balancing parenthood and her political career. She poured her heart and soul into the creation of borrowed mothers. It reveals the significant difficulties and inner battles she experienced. Why did Ben-Gurion consider Golda Meir a pivotal figure in Israel's financial success? David Ben-Gurion sent Golda Meir to the US to raise funds for Israel's independence. He expected a modest $7 million, but the sum she raised exceeded his wildest dreams. Just look at what she has accomplished. She collected nearly $50 million, mostly in small bills. Ben-Gurion declared, When the history of Israel is written one day, it will remember a Jewish woman who, like a financial architect, constructed the foundation of our nation. Why did Golda Meir secretly meet with King Abdullah in Jordan and what resulted from their meeting? She had only one goal in mind, to seek peace in the midst of his warlike preparations. When he proposed postponing Israel's declaration, she retorted, We've waited 2,000 years. Is that hurrying? Days later, she, along with 21 men, signed Israel's Declaration of Independence. It marked a profoundly emotional moment when their long-cherished dream was finally within reach. As the state expanded, Golda Meir's responsibilities likewise ballooned. She managed the development of 200,000 flats, 30,000 homes, new enterprises, and highways while serving as Labour Minister from 1949 to 1956. But that's not all. Her influence reached even further. She played a pivotal role in shaping Israel's National Insurance Act of 1954, a cornerstone of the nation's social welfare system. Her dedication was a blazing torch, lighting the path and guiding the way throughout her life. It safeguarded the security, independence and pride of every Jew, much like a lighthouse in a storm. In 1969, Levi Eshkol's sudden death led to the Labour Party's selection of Golda Meir as his successor. Golda Meir's leadership during the 1973 war inspired Israel to victory. Her legacy, beyond politics, lies in her Zionist and liberal ideals, embodying a commitment to both her nation and humanity. Golda Meir, 
imperfect but remarkable, was a symbol of unity, juggling and balancing the betterment of the Jewish people and the world. Wasn't she the perfect example of a liberal Zionist who chose to embrace the world of and rather than either or? Comment below. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and giving us a like. Don't miss this golden chance to join our growing community of history enthusiasts.